Okay. Uh, good evening and welcome to um, um, the first board meeting in January. And welcome to those people that are, are following on us on Zoom. Uh, the Richmond Board of Education acknowledges and thanks the First Peoples of the Hunkamina Line Group on whose traditional and ceded territory we teach, learn, and live. And uh, recognition of visitors. So we have three um, um, and our, uh, from our Richmond Teachers Association. Um, and welcome to the three of you in the gallery. <laughs> As resident Eason and Brooks Douglas. Oh, think service. So, sorry. <laughs> Brooke Douglas from Learning Services, not the RTRT. Um, anyway, uh, we'll move on. Uh, announcements from, from trustees. Uh, are, are the announcements? Trustee Larson. Thank you, Trustee Dubotny. <clears throat> Black History Month. Three months. Every February, people in Canada are invited to participate in Black History Month festivities and events that honour the legacy of Black Canadians and their communities. Our school district will celebrate the many achievements of Black Canadians who through, throughout history have contributed greatly to make Canada the culturally diverse, compact and, and prosperous nation it is today. Our schools will act actively engage in learn, learning opportunities directly related to Black History Month and will share their learning on their, their school websites and social media so the wider community, community can learn and celebrate together. Black History Month opens this, the door not, not only to conversations about the significant contributions of Black Canadians, but also to, to the impacts of racism and our commitment to make the Richmond, Richmond School District a, a safe and respectful place for all members of our community. Thank you. Any other? Uh, Steve Wong. Okay. One. For 2023 20, uh, 20, 24 announcements, brief, brief regarding the 2023 20, and 24 annual budget will be accepted, accepted our periods to notice at the, at the February 22nd, March 29th, and April 26th. 2023 20, regular meeting the board. board. Please note that. Budget updates will be made available on the, the budget budget website. All budget feedback will be considered by the board as part of the budget process, which is anticipated to be com completed by 2020. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Yang. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chairperson Tabong Tabong. This week, members of the Chinese in Vietnamese and other East and Southeast Asian communities celebrate the, the Lunar New Year, one of, the, one of the most important celebrations in the lunar cal calendar. Lunar New, New Year, also known as Ch China New Year or Spring Festival, is a time for families to come together, exchange gifts, gifts, and feast on traditional foods. The celebration is steeped in, in ancient traditions, including lighting of fireworks, lion and dragon dances, and the giving, the giving of envelopes. Lunar New Year is also an uh, opportunity to highlight the many pa past and current contributions of, of the Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, and other East and Southeast Asian communities who have helped make our, our country better, fairer, and, and more inclusive. These communities have, play, have played a vital role in shaping our diverse cultural land, land and continue to contribute to our economic, social, and political fabric. Richmond School District wishes all a happy and prosperous Lunar New Year. May the, the New Year bring good luck, health, and prosperity to all those who are celebrating. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Yang and Trustee Hamaguti. The National Hall of Hall Remembrance Day, June 27th, marks the anniversary of the, of the liberation of Auschwitz Birkenau as International Holocaust Remembrance Day. On this annual day of commemoration, Richmond School, School District pays tribute, tribute to the memory of the victims of the, of the Holocaust. The district is committed to supporting those who identify as being part of the Jewish faith and will continue to develop educational programs that help prevent anti-Semitism, racism, and other forms of intolerance. The public is invited to join the Vancouver Holocaust Education Center for a recorded commemorative event 
from Vancouver City Hall on, on Friday, January 27th, 1.32 p.m. by visiting www.vhecc.org. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Um, I don't think I did the uh, recognition, the land recognition. I will do that now. Um, the Richmond Board of Education acknowledges and thanks the first people of the Hunkaminum language group on whose traditional and, and ceded territories we teach, learn, and then live. And we definitely do not want to uh, forget to recognize that. Uh, Madam Secretary, Treasurer, is there uh, any materials that aren't included in, um, in the Yeah, so uh, thank you, Chair Chairperson. All information required for this meeting has been posted on the district's website. And adoption of the agenda. I think I think the agenda is complete. I just need a mover and seconder. So moved by Trustee Wong, Wong seconded by Tr Trustee Larson. All, all those in favor? Uh, none, none opposed? Thank you. Motions be adopted. the agenda is adopted. Um, there aren't aren't any presentations to their special recognitions. Brief questions from the public. We always forward to uh, President of the RTA, uh, Ms. Bavar Stars. Thank you. Good evening and uh, thank you. And uh, um, my questions actually um, re relate to the minutes because I'm um, looking ahead to the uh, next meeting meeting and really, really what they're all about is um, the, the current new operating grants special purpose funds and wondering um, what happened on December 15th. I know about CEF, the classroom enhancement fund was actually part of the um, finance and and bill meeting, but I actually actually don't know what it was in terms of the operating grants and the special purpose funds. And I know in February where you'd be passing an amended budget. And normally in, the, in at least the past few years, there's there's a bog meeting ending in early January. So we get an update of that of that information and some early projections. I know it's early, but it does has help us um, when we're looking ahead to um, creating briefs. Um, um, and obviously what we're always looking for at this point and in the year is suggestions for enhancements. So those are my questions. It is what happened, happened on December 15th, and um, is there a place to provide input on the amended budget, or maybe there's nothing, nothing been put on? But those really are my questions, and they are right out of the last month's minute, minute. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Treasurer Wang, maybe you can... Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, thank you, um, uh, Ms. Berstock, for your your question. Uh, so yeah, for December fifteenth, operating budget, we have received um, uh, we have received uh, the the Richmond School School District. We have received the um, uh, the the enrollmenting from the uh, the ministry, and that is uh, as you know, we have experienced a significant enrollment growth this year in September. So the, so the total um, of operating funding based on the enrollment growth is about seven point five million dollars. Um, so everything else uh, in terms of special purpose grants, the majority of the special purpose purpose is of course CEF, and we have re received uh, the all the things that we requested. Uh, so so those are all good news. Uh, um, you know the the only thing we have not received. The, the provincial estimate is the provincial settlement funding. So that is a, um, I would say it's a it's a it's a late announcement this year. Uh, it's, uh, it's a normal 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 this time of the year we would receive all the funding announcements. So that's the only thing that we're we're still waiting for. Um, with that piece of funding, it's uh, the accounting treatment or accounting standard accounting re reporting requirement, and it's different. You know, you know, if we don't receive the revenue, we can't record. 
So that's the only thing that's holding us up on the amendment. But, but we don't, as of today, we don't have a complete financial state for the amendment. But that's 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 why. <laughs> so, but uh, it is a really good feedback. So uh, we will go back and consider maybe um, at another bog meeting in February. Great, thank you. It so sounds like. I, I didn't miss something, so I appreciate that answer. It's very, very helpful. Thanks. And there is a bog meeting February. Uh, March, March 9th. Yeah. First bog meeting, meeting March 9th. Great. Thank you. Bog is the advisory working group. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, I will. That's the com the uh, com communication. Great. And our executive for parents, uh, Lieutenant Robinson. Great, thank, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, just just uh, one quick date before I, before I give a presentation of around the district, and I would turn things over to uh, Secretary Treasurer for that uh, update, date, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sue Robinson. So, the Education has made the decision to appoint PFM Executive Search to facilitate the recruitment process of next superintendent of the planned timeline is to complete the entire recruitment process by May. Uh, the board values the stakeholders' input in the selection process. Uh, there will be opportunities for stakeholders to be involved in this process. Uh, specifically, in this process, at the end of January, PFM will facilitate a, a meeting for uh, stakeholder representatives and three representatives to and discuss the different aspects of the superintendent role, which uh, uh, those discussions will inform the finalization of, of the executive profile file. The next opportunity for stakeholder involvement is at the end of April. PFM will facilitate a meeting for stakeholder representatives and trust trustee representatives to interview the final analyst candidates prior to the board and their final decision. So uh, yeah, this is a quick up update on the superintendent and recruit process. Back to you, superintendent. Great, great. Thank you. So, as always, uh, lots of amazing things going on around the district over the last month. Month uh, was uh, very, very cool to be able to share. So, we'll start with act of kindness. Two students from secondary, with the help of their vice principal, and supervising teacher, organizing a picking a pickleball event to raise money for the Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, the tournament, which will take will take us on January twenty eighth. So, just in a few few days, that's at Canby. It aims aims to raise awareness awareness of cancer as well as raises money for uh, for the cause. As the students have all already raised uh, over six sixteen hundred dollars in registration fees and their hope uh, is to reach the goal of two thousand so they're, they're almost there uh the event has generated a lot of interest and may even lead to the to the introduction pickleball and all in the school's classes so so a nice news story uh and students just doing some well uh advocacy with super Black Excellence Day, as we heard a little bit earlier today, uh, on Jan 13th, the, R the Richmond District celebrated Black Excellence Day. Day. And this is a day uh, to honor the history and contributions of Black Canadians. Black Excellence originated from the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s, a homage to civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It has become a day, a day to stand in solidarity with Black Canadians and to celebrate their history, art, stories, achievement, and entry. Approximately 600 students from across the district participated in a virtual event, event honor of the day and students learned from an impressive line of Black Canadian Canadian speak. Students students did to reflect on what Black excellence means excellence means to them. them. They can celebrate, celebrate Black excellence throughout the, the year and promoting Black and Black excellence can su support reconciliation. Recently, the Buzz Art Club at McNeil Secondary School completed their annual annual thon. The club has been running since 2015 and has don donated to different charities over the years, raising over $15,000. The charity chosen for this year's event was was Kent House in Vancouver. The students work, work collaboratively to design and paint attic works, loosely related to the chosen chair and chair, and focused on the theme of stories. Drew inspiration from the social, social, cultural, personal, and historical experiences. It's Scratch Juice Jr. So two and three students at Quilina Elementary School have embarking on an exciting journey into the world of voting. 
guided by a teacher and consultant, been delving into this app, Scratch Junior, discovering the poss possibility of creating inter interact char characters that could move and speak. As they have progressed through multiple lessons, their creativity and animation have flourished as they craft their own unique stories, compete with textbooks, bubble sound effects, and animated illustrations. Outdoor learning at General Cole Curry Elementary School. So grade one students have been engaging in a weekly outdoor learning activities September. After returning for winter winter break, we visited different parts of their school's out outdoor learning spaces and reflected on experiences just together. The students also named the different spaces such as the Imagination Forest, the Story Tree, the Friendship Ship Forest, Sharing Garden. I like the Story Tree because we can also play games like Rave, Rave Spider, said one student. Sometimes, sometimes you look up, you can see nests, and then you look around and you see more, added another, another student. To document their learning, the students created a map showing these different spaces and the memory that they have there. there. Some students use, use to find glasses to look closely at details, and, other, and others work to play on their own map. Digital Story Club. Uh, McNeely primary story students exploring where, where coding is in our world and what might be used to tell stories. They've explored digital coding structures, apps, and programs, as well as non-digital strategies to co-code with, with their friends. The big learning for students has been that coding is a, is a literacy that lives all, all around us. When we, when we understand it, we can decompose it and manipulate it and it used to create new and editing experiences. More than anything, when our learners code, they practice using their core, their core competence to get the, get the job done. Conversations about identity. So recently, recently, an illustrator, Chiba Stearns, paid his first of three visits to home elementary school. He shared his story of growing up with, with mixed heritage and not seeing himself represented in children's books. This inspired him to write his own book, Mixed Critters, which is a whimsical alphabet book. On January 23rd, Jeff Jeff returned to the school and shared his graphic novel on being Yukiko with the intermediate classes. This compelling story about the Japanese internment features modern day characters of mixed heritage and can contains tan docu document retold via flashbacks from the co-author's family history. Jeff's workshops are so inspiring. Uh, home homeless students to write, draw, and, and celebrate their diverse, diverse identity. A Rubik, Rubik's Cube of So over the last term, immediate students, students at Anderson have been learning about algorithms needed to solve a Rubik's Cube in their applied design skills, skills technologies learning time. On fr Friday, the January 13th, the students hosted a, a school-wide Rubik's Cube event. They shared the Rubik's Cube learning with other students. Using a Rubik's Cube involves, involves in competencies such as communication, problem, problem solving, and spatial reason, reasoning. And following this, five students from each intermediate class volunteered to compete in a time challenge. The school gym was full of excitement as school came, came together around their school goal, goal, building community through mathematics. I cannot have anything more stressful than in front of a school <laughs> tool trying to figure out Q. And Ellie Mapleman. As February approaches, students and, and staff at Shell Elementary are getting excited for their, for their annual Caval Week. To help them prepare, the Mapleman came to the school to teach them about French Canadian traditions. Students learned, learned about the process of transforming maple sap into syrup, how to play musical spiegel spoons, and traditional dance dances have been performed at the Sugar Shack. The highlight of the visit was when the students got to taste real maple taff taffy served on a bed of snow. Wow. Uh, it was delicious. It was, was a delicious and educational experience that brought the school to schools and French speaking communities together. Uh, and, and chair a person, person that concludes my report as always, I am so, so impressed quality of what's happening in our classrooms across the, the school district. And I'm happy to share that. Thank you. I remember doing something like a make up maple taffy on snow when it was kids. I'm glad they're still doing it. Yeah, that sounds like, yeah. And pickleball. I gotta learn to play pickleball. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was super interesting. Okay. Going to approval of the minutes. Uh, there is a record on camera meeting of the board held Wednesday, December 14th, 2022. And a record rec of an in-camera meeting of the board held, held Wednesday, January 11th, 2023, and uh, there is uh, minutes of the meeting of the board, board Wednesday, December 14th, 2022, for approval. And uh, Trustee Larson moves, and, and uh, Tremong has second. 
And any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. And oh, nobody's opposed. Just okay. Um, there is no, no business rising and new business uh, is an interesting topic. Inquiry to grant. See mid mid year update from as Assistant Lieutenant Brodigan. Thank you. Uh, joining me this evening is District Tip Administrator or Curriculum and Assessor Assess Douglas. Um, as we give our, our update uh, this evening, evening um, inquiry is really a foundational component of professional learning um, and has been a, a great way to harness this and deepen learning experience for educators um, and student learners as well. well. And as you know, you've been supporting inquiry grants um, to support for collaboration and pedagogy practice and professional inquiry. I'm just going to ask for our slides. Right, right. Um, as, as quickly received, Eve grants in the amount of $2,000 uh, for their successful grant applications yearly. Um, inquiry, inquiry grants are intended to enhance student learning, learning, while at the same time they are intended to enhance the learning culture um, of our district and create explicit alignment and, and connection to schools learning focus um, as, as stated in school stories and to the strategic priorities of the board's strategic plan, particularly strategic priorities one and two, inspired learners and equity and inclusion. Inquiry products inspire student learners and educators as learners as they embark on their inquiry journeys. Inquiry projects are exerted in equity and inclusion and seek to create more equitable learning environments. At the district level, we intentionally bring in inquiry grant learners uh, uh, together, together to explain and support the inquiry process just using um, um, the sort of inquiry by Judy Halbert and Linda Kaiser. So the book, and you can see the sort of inquiry up on the screen there. One of the key features of the spirals of a model is, is seek student voice. This takes place as part of the scanning process in the inquiry where ed educators ask their students about their learning experiences and their learning envi environments um, in order to choose an area to, to inquire more deeply about. And in the, in the end, if their inquiry had a difference for student learning, um, as well as to consider their next step as they work to, work to continuously Im improve outcomes for, for students. In 2022-23, uh, there are, are 11 areas, six of which are, are new based on feedback from educators in the district. This year, there are over 400 educators participating in 112 grants in, in three of our schools. Support for our inquiry team, teams involved coming together, together in our for an inaugural inauguration networking session. And, and inquiry team also meet several times in small groups throughout the school year with a teacher consultant and a mid-year check check-in. And in late May, May, all area teams come together for the inquiry cell celebration. This year, the inquiry celebration is Thursday, May 18th uh, from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. We hope that you, you will also join us uh, uh, at that celebration and, and see the results of this year's, year's inquiry products. And there'll be more information coming about that. Um, and now I'm going to pass it over to District Administrator Douglas, um, who's going to share, share more details about some of some of the grants that are happening this year. Thank you. <clears throat> As was explained, uh, there's a number of steps in a pro process that our uh, teachers follow as, as they go through their inquiry cycle. Inquiry is an iterative cycle um, as the spiral diagram illustrated earlier. And so as we go through the cycle, we're, we're continue to check back in with our students and check back in with each other in our inquiry teams to see if what we're doing is on the right track. That's a, that's a really important part of this process. 
What I would to offer you this evening is a bit of an overview. There are 11 different areas uh, of uh, in inquiry that teachers are exploring here with their st students. And I'd like to highlight just one little piece in each of those areas. So as I, as I through the slides, there'll be a few quotes and those are questions and stay directly from the school teams. So they'll be up there and then I'll to one of them specifically as, so that you get a sense of depth and breadth of the type of work that educators are doing in Richmond, and also so that you can see that focus, focus students and the student in experience, because there's really, really a very vast array of work that's being done. So there are 11, just previewing that piece. So the, the first area that I'm highlight, highlight is one around activating student voice. What that means is that we're giving students more choice, control, and opportunities for collaboration as part of their learning experience. The specific example that I want to bring to attention is uh, from McKinney School. It's the uh, uh, question in the middle that re how can we engage students in reflecting on and communicating of their learning while we'll make making connections to big ideas? The specific way that McKinney is looking at that is, is through their rules team and IEP process, where they've engaged students and their families in, in having a greater degree of control and voice and input into that process and how, how that looks to them at the school level. Uh, in my conversations with that school, it's it's been a really valued and appreciated process by families. The second area uh, uh, highlighting for you to tonight are JEDI, our justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in the school and in classrooms. And the fir first question up there is from Gil Gilmore, and this is, this is the third year of their inquiry into having a pride club at their school. And they also have bridged that focus to, to be a part of their school school story, which focuses on belonging. Um, one of the things that they are learning and learning as they go through this multi-year process is that while the initial intention was to have students who are part of, part of the LGBTQ2 plus community um, have a place to go and tend to feel connected and supported within the school environment, that actually um, it's of interest to those students, students who are wishing to grow their allyship and inclusivity of all kinds. They, at times, times 80 students come to their Pride Club activities which is large for a school of school of 300. We have, we have a number of inquiry grants in the area, area of social emotional learning. Uh, one, one of the questions, the top one is from Tom Set. Thompson has been looking into the zones of relation, um, which is a frame framework uh, by which we give language and, and skills for students to support them in their own self-regulation. And having a consistency of that language across, across classrooms and, and across this community is really important for students' success with those skills. Uh, Thompson said, decided to create, create magnets with some of that language on, on it. And they shared those those maps with parents at their conference time, time, so that parents got to learn that language language of self relation, and then then take them at home home for own home context, so that they would be having having that consistency of language support at home, home and at school. Truth and Reconciliation uh, had a number of grants as well this year. And so many schools uh, who chose to explore this area of inquiry have based their uh, conversations on uh, this book, Rewa by Joe Crona. And, and if you had a chance to look at, look at um, it's an act for reconciliation and anti-racist education, and, and it is being graciously across the district by um, educators. And, and specifically, uh, one of the, the uh, chapter five in this book uh, ha has been picked up by a lot of, lot of our school communities where, where it talks about how to live and embed the first people's, people's principle of learning in the school. What actions can you take? And Joe Cronin does a lovely job of asking us of questions for our own reflection because there isn't just one way, one, way, one check checklist really about um, having that based in your school con context, involving the people pool in community. And so these are ongoing conversations that are, that are happening at many, many schools uh, through inquiry grant. 
heading in, in a different direction, uh, we have a number of uh, inquiries into formative assessment. So, so formative assessment is uh, supporting students in, in understanding their own learning and their progress with their own learning as they go through and it's uh, their learning uh, sequence. And that's different from um, a summit assessment, which would be like a, like a rub card. So in um, our formative assessment, the photo up there, I know it, it, you don't need to, to read, read it, it matter, but those are called learning maps. And so that essentially actually maps out for, for students' learning journey, journey proficiency will look like. And so students know that in the work that they're, that they're doing, this is, is what... Uh, this is what their success can look like and where they need to go next next in learning. So a number of our secondary schools, schools specifically are looking into, into how they can use learning, learning apps or to better support student uh, success with their learning and that feeling of, of um, AC. Uh, in planning for instruction, um, the one of these inquiries looks at, uh, this is quite a creative one, that first one at the top, the top of the screen is actually, actually two schools. And these two schools have gotten together to lo look at how they could build an inter inter -dual, um community of musicians. And so there are the me me teachers as well as student students. They all get to together across school community communities and play together and learn from each other in that kind of real life physician kind kind of way as opposed to in a classroom environment. They're wanting to look at how there is how we how we can grow a different way of learning music and that's really really authentic as students consider a future career or a future hobby or future interest in interest in musical community. Our library learning commons, means we always have a lot of engagement from our teacher, teacher librarians in um, and in evolving their spaces to better serve their school communities. Um, specific example I want to share with you today is from Grower. And uh, um, Gore is looking at how they can develop and open diversify their collection to support Indigenous teachers and promote student learning. A big focus here for them is the literacy skills. Skills include promoting the oral storytelling. And so you can see they've got a bunch of different materials that they've, they've brought in as a way of helping students interact with those materials and with books and with stories to, to interpret stories, but to also tell their other own stories as a way to build, build language acquisition. We see this type of thing happening across, across a number of our libraries as we support, support students who are learning both, both and English. Learning environments and spaces, there's also, also a lot of interest in this area. And uh, uh, on the table there, it was rem reminding me actually of the, the, um, of the, the photos earlier from Curry. And you can see that they've got a bunch of uh, sort of real life materials. And so, so there's magnifying glasses, glasses and some beads and some different um, materials that you would use outdoors. And uh, Steve's, they're lo looking at how they can build a community across their program. So Steve's, Steve's has, of course, Montessori program, as well as the neighborhood, neighborhood program. And they're finding that through, through having uh, cooperative goals or, or challenges that the students can use the, these different materials that are connect, connected to them and work cooperatively and together, together both across grades as, as well as across program, programs in order to uh, solve these or, you know, understand what that challenge is. And so the um, the inquiry has been around like how can how can we use these types of materials and these types of types yeah. challenges to sort of overcome some of those those barriers we see in schools around um, class what class you're in and what grade you're in what program program you're in. Next, we have numerous and um, we highlight the, the example that highlighting is the first one from Anderson. And then the Rubik's Cube example was a great one of how they're looking into, into the inquiry of building um, community amongst their staff, students, and their families in order to support numeracy. And the, again, this is a cross program as this is a little track school. Part of their exploration includes growing best, best practices as for include learning, including use of visual, visual. And again, that, that theme of common language, which for all of learners, so, so that families are learning that, that the language of numeracy as alongside uh, their, their, their children and as they go through um, both the neighborhood pro program and French immersion program. Outdoor learning and land-based pedagogy. 
Um, a number of schools are looking at their outdoor out bases and how their students interact and feel connected to those outdoor spaces. Specifically, uh, Ferris has a court um, space. They've been looking at how, how they can use that, that space and design that, design that space with the input of um, a specific, specific student with complex needs to, to better meet the needs in the school uh, environment and to also provide ways for them, for them to connect other students in ways that work for them. And so this is a, a co-design process that's, that the school has undertaken with a specific student and some peers in order to build that sense of belonging and action. Finally, our Pillars of Literacy. So our Pillars of Literacy is a comprehensive liter literacy resource um, developed by our teacher consultants here in Richmond. It's uh, available on our portal in French and English and is comprehensive through grade five, kindergarten grade five. And a number of our students are looking at how can uh, uh, learning experiences using, using the Pillar of Literacy to promote belonging and engagement as well as language acquisition for all learners in both French and the neighborhood program and English. Um, <clears throat> through the different um, activities and ways of te teaching lined through um, through this resource. And so, so the specific example I've highlight highlighted here is Bridge, Bridge, where they're looking at really bringing joy uh, and literacy and the joy of being able to communicate in all of those different ways that make us as literate learners. Um, um, alive to a greater degree in their student students. Well, um, that's, that's a really high level summary of a lot of the in inquiry that way on in the district. Um, and it was really hard to choose uh, which project projects to highlight because there's so much creativity um, and engagement and interest with free grants. Uh, and I hope you can see the, the collaboration that it supports. Uh, it's, uh, it's a testament to our educa educators um, and, and our um, passion uh, coming through in the inquiry projects. And as I said, I hope You'll have some time on May the 18th to come and see the results of their work at, at the celebration, and we'll be sending sending that information to you once we have our Loki Loki cured and, and, and all those details. Um, but we are happy to take any questions that you might have. Trustee uh, Larson. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This is just, <laughs> it's learning and learning and learning and learning and all the different type of learning and how to learn and teachers learning and children learning and families learning. It's just, just makes me want to go and go back to school or work mm -hmm. in school like that is it fascinates me and and the richness um i i it, it feel feels like we're step, step away a little bit from learning how to do school it's it's learning to learn and and le learn about yourself and i think that's preparing just moving for, forward it's step at a time then they get to 12 and they just decide they want to do this is just just um so exciting so um don't have any questions other than i would love to attend something for a whole day <laughs> to to hear more because this is everything we do is this mm -hmm. right like this is um thank you can't help help trustee <laughs> belusa thank you thank you madam chair uh I, I, like, I like the two words, inquiry and, and grant. Uh, so like the the purpose, uh, like this, activated student voice and uh, pillars of literacy, especially pillars of uh, financial literacy. Uh, it's possible, I just tried to inquire and I'd like to hear your comments. Is it possible in, ter in terms of debating active student voice like student empowerment, that area, area or we organize students to help them, them speak their, their own voices? Like we know we have student council, also like Supreme Student Council in the district, where they could promote, like for example, uh, having you know, a uh, uh, newsletter where the students could really come up with, with their ideas on how to develop their individual potential so that we will also be, be guided on, on how to support and help, help 
in terms of that regard, as mandated by the preamble of, of the school act. And secondly, in terms of uh, expressing single political views, I know policy is sometimes boring, but we're giving them the chance to express, express their views. I think there's a risk in our, our school district, but, you know, giving them the opportunity to uh, really air out what are some of the I, the views that would also help help us, uh, I guess, accomplish as uh, stated in strategic plan number one, one and strategic planning number two, two. So by giving them, you know, their, uh, be giving, giving report in terms of student empowerment, I think. We we will we will we will have the chance and the opportunity a member of the board the board to to learn enough from them and so many issues they they can they can probably raise by giving them them empowerment to air out their you know their their views thank you. I think that's uh, some one of the reasons we um, use the spirals inquiry process, um, and, and because the inquiry model model really asks um, us to ask students their point of view, um, um, and share um, their exper experiences, so their learning and their environments, uh, and the example of the Pride Club, for for example, so they can talk about, about social issues, uh, um, and inquire with them also about how that how that change. Um, in the process in their school, the learning environment in their school has affected them. Because we also ask the question, do you know you've made enough of a difference? Um, and uh, by, by asking students questions about learning, um, that's how educators determine their next steps Steps in terms of how we made, we made a difference for our students. students. Do they feel they have a safe uh, place to learn? Do they have that sense of belonging? Do they feel like they have a voice in, in, uh, in their school community? Um, um, and through what they, they tell us, um, to teach to design their in inquiries around. Uh, just to follow up, Madam Chair, the second thing is the grant. If, if the student pursue that that kind of work or project, and they can they can they receive grant where they could invite speakers, you know, along, along special literacy or other issues, so that they they have the opportunity really like we are doing here here now to govern themselves and express their views that, uh, you know, we will be, be uh, able to know what's really in their mind in terms of their individual potential. These grants uh, that we're talking, talking about this evening are in particularly grants for teachers. Uh, so they are, they are in grants for teachers to develop an inquiry around. But as we've said, they work uh, with their students. Uh, and that looks different depending on the age of students. And so in secondary schools, schools I know that we have um, specific cl clubs that started because students have come forward. For um, example, I can think of the Indigenous Languages Club at Steveson, London, uh, where students had an expert desire to learn uh, their Indigenous language language and um, bring, bring uh, students into that. And that that is part of an inquiry grant, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. Trustee Yang. Thank you, Chairperson, and, and um, thank you, uh, Assistant Superintendent, for uh, this report. I just have quick, quick questions. I see that um, there are quite a, quite a few grant areas in the 2022 2023 year. Um, I guess that speaks to the six of uh, the Indian Core Grants uh, program. Can you tell, tell us? Uh, that, that uh, whether this expansion is, is indeed uh, well, due to the uh, uh, demand on these uh, uh, different uh, categories and, and issues. Yeah, we've uh, through the through the sort of the journey of our grants in the district, we've tried to be responsive to what what educators are telling us. Um, and as as we talked about the 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 process of collaborating through your grant is th with teacher consultant who supports the work, um, supports the uh, great team, and. Through conversations um, and through an inquiry, teachers pursuing a different idea might emerge. Um, also connected to what schools are focusing on in their school focus, 
and the strategic priorities that have now been in, in place for a couple of years, um, different areas started to become alive um, and teachers have, have questions so they want to pursue an inquiry. So in order to support that, the inquiry committee, which is a district committee of stakeholders from RTA, RTA um, and Ryan Rask, talk about what the needs are and this year we expanded actually quite a bit this year um, to include those needs and seen quite a bit, a bit of uptake uh, in, in those areas. It's kind of exciting to, to have new area, new area inquiry happening. It, it is indeed very exciting, exciting just and and the fact that it is needs um based and just um it, it's suited to whatever needs are in, in in our schools i think that that's great um my second question is um do you, do you know whether there or not a high, higher uptake uh either of the two categories in term terms of uh or in inquiry grants in terms of um inspired learners or equity yeah. inclusion i don't have that information in front of me, do I? I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, we have, I'd say there's a little bit more um, uptake in the inspired learners. Um, one, one of the big, uh, one of the, the big, there, there's two areas in inspired learners that have a very high number of grant and applicants, which is or grant participants, which is learning environments and then the learning or the library library incomes. So those two areas uh, are typically areas that um, are popular for grants as people are wanting to explore their different way that they can build supportive learning environments and be responsive to student needs. And so um, because, because if you consider how many classrooms there are in the district, uh, and as as those different teachers see and hear about, oh, oh you know, they've made these changes to their learning environment and having this kind of feedback from some students, I want to do that too. And it kind of spreads and grows. And so there's there tends to be a lot for that reason. However, I would say also that um, the two new two of the new areas, Jedi and Truth and Reconciliation, also have a lot of engagement as those are areas that have come forward from students want to have a voice wanting to have those conversations in schools and from teacher teachers wanting to know you know you know how to embed that in in a really rightful and meaningful way it's so inspiring to hear uh, um so and, and again thank you uh trustee Gucci. question just comment um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to attend some of the inquiry grants the uh, uh, presentations and uh, i'm always kind of struck i mean i've been to some of the little kids kids uh, sires and it's like you can see, see the same level of excitement in terms of come and see my booth, come and see my booth. And uh, it, it's so neat to see, to see that kids and the teacher. And it's, you know, even nicer for the fact that, you know, shows that the teachers, you know, you know still want more things and the things that they want to hear about. And, uh, but yeah, the parallels between the two, two are, are, are quite, quite close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks. More questions? Uh, Trustee Bang. So I just, I just want to note that uh, the inquiry team, the grant team is that the team is a search from the provincial grant or, or side the school school system or run the such such type program in the school district. So the um, the fund, funds for, for these are supported by the board. It's a budget budget item uh, through uh, through the board. Um, and the, and the teams, school teams, teams that are uh, together. Uh, based on there's an application that they fill um, um, and come together as a team to uh, fill in their application around around their ink for the year. This year have a few a few uh, inquiry grants um, as district minister minister just um, described that are a couple of schools working together, and that's a new area that that we are exploring. Um, as teachers have said, you know, like to talk about music program for example, and bringing musicians together from across the district. This is just uh, for the, all the school, just like an emergency school. School see that some some websites I um, um yeah have the, the computer thing to the grant. So I I just but you said that that's is for the student why other school uh don't have this program on on grant and it's a choice uh for for teachers to to apply, and so um we have forty three schools with grants. Some schools have one have one grant that focusing on. Some schools have more than than one grant. It's also dependent on school size. Of course, of course, some have very small staffs, um, and other schools have very quite large staff staff, so they might have more grants. Uh, Just depend on the teacher's interest. Thank you. That's right. Okay. Thank you.
Well, um, if there aren't any more comments, I want to thank you for the presentation. I I think it's all, I mean, obviously teachers want them too. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and it looks like they're really enjoying the learning. And, um, they're, they're inspired by learning. And that leads to inspired students. And I remember, um, you know, a few, a few years ago, um, there was, was uh, trustees with the BC School Tr Trustees Association and were really focused on, on, you know, how do we engage students and inspire them. But, but boy, boy, I wish I was in school now <laughs> because it's not just the teacher holding all the information and and feeding it out. It's more, more it's it's all collaborative with the, the students, you know, really in control of their own, their own learning as well, well, just and being guided. So I think it's fantastic. Um, and, and and the Nick uh, collaboration. And so I did attend band a concert at Blair. And I, and I believe there was um, the secondary school teacher was collaborating with the elementary school teacher uh, or uh, band director at Blair and they you know, were, were bringing together. So um, I think it's just, it's great and uh, it's for all your work and and the presentation i think we're all all inspired to want to learn all <laughs> thank, thank you and trustees we, needed an inquiry <laughs> we appreciate the boards of course yeah, yeah since we've instituted that that right. uh, in, in very grand grant i mean the uptake has, has been amazing so. thank, thank you, you. okay Second kind opportunity for questions from the public on, on Tate's agenda. Are there any questions? There are none from the Zoom gang uh, and none from the gallery. There. Okay, okay. Seating committee. So, uh, audit committee, uh, tr trustee Yang. Nothing, nothing to report. You'd have a meeting. Meeting. Meeting one was uh, on yeah, March twenty. Oh, sorry, January yeah. twenty. Okay, great. Thank you. And education and committee. Uh, there is uh, trust trustee Larson, and I believe she has a couple of recommendations. I do. I'll read the recommendations. <clears throat> Pardon me. No, oh, where is it in front of me? That the Richmond Richmond was, is the one for equity and action project project. Right? That the Richmond Board of Edu Education directs staff to proceed with, with the recommendations contained in the, in the Equity in Action Project Report. Um, um, this was pre presented to us uh, at the Education Committee meeting last Wednesday. And I know the dis dis equity scan was initiated by staff, staff in October of 2020 and completed in the late spring of 2022. And it's it's a full report. We we had most of our trustees there. There, there were two not able, not able to get at that point. But if no, I'm so sorry. Oh, um, I'm I'm sorry. I, sh I should. Um, I, I just put a recommendation forward. I, uh, yeah, I'm. I've never done done this. Before. Oh yeah. my god. Okay. That's so, okay. and I have a. Move. So you I read the recommendation. Yes. And, and oh, I'm looking, moved the motion. I'm looking for a second. Okay. I see Hamaguchi. And then you can speak to. Oh, oh I'm brave. That's okay. No, no, no problem. Learning. <laughs> um, just just to to um make it so if there there's is it okay okay for, for me to if there's any question question comments, um, we can Ms. McMillan. Yeah. To, to respond if if there are do you, do trust trustees have any questions on recommendation or the report uh trustee student yeah and i know we've received the report report already board yeah because recommendation is kind of funny coming from a trustee but uh, um it's just approved from, from educate no yes. but we've already as a full board seen the report um earlier so uh just a question around uh, consider transition new indigenous education advisory committee. It says consider who will who will make that decision. That's that's in the 
should the recommendations pass, we explore the options. Currently, we do we do have um, Aboriginal Enhancement Advisory. That group has has been part of the original Enhancement Advisory Committee with the report that had continued on until June of this past year. And then looking at the evolution and the different opportunities that arise through the equity in action, we would bring that consideration as to, to the benefit of how it would fit into, into the new structure as an advisory and certainly, and certainly in terms of reference, what would, what, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, question but in, in terms of um, the terms of reference and the purpose of that advisory, advisory group is also to report or as we move with the recommendations of the scale. Yeah, yeah, and the only thing I would say is um, uh, we have the Aboriginal Enhancement Committee with Board Committee, mm -hmm. um, and my understanding, understanding would be that this was, would replace that, yes, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would want it more to establish mm -hmm. um, um, the transition, not as as a, as a board member, as a board com committee, for it to continue as in a new direction. So. I mean, you can take that under advisement, but I think it would, would be a board decision as, as to, um, and I really want to establish that right away. Um, so whatever process that is, for me, it's a, it's a round word consider um, rather than establish. And that's something absolutely as we move forward with this process that we would look to take actions and I would be, as, as a fellow learner uh, with Trustee Larson, the next step of swing forward in, in creating that group. I was just going to say, you know, that that I, that was the, the recommendations from this equity and action project to, to consider that. Yes. But um, the board is, uh, that was a re recommendation. And so this recommendation now, now is um, to proceed the recommendation are contained in any report. So I understand. Stand. It's a consider. Not, yeah. Instead of established. I think we're saying we're not considering any anymore. We're moving ahead because I I checked on this today. So, so yes, that would be a, approval of the advisory committee. But Mr. Superintendent. That was my understanding of the interpretation of this. Yes, yes. Unless, unless us trustees he's had a concern so that that, that would that would be our interpretation of it as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Trustee Yang. Uh, thank, thank you, Chairperson. And I think to to Trustee Jen's point, uh, it does say in the package that um, uh, quotes the Equity and Action Team is recommending that this district transition to a formal formalized education advisory committee with clear clear terms of reference. Yes. So I think that's uh, what it's uh, recommending. Um, and I certainly appreciate that because that, that's another uh, avenue for stakeholders and our students to, to, to you know, continue our work, work uh, in, in terms of truth and reconciliation. Um, just a few, few comments. Um, you know, reading this report is so like, like it gave me gave me a lot of of actual action at, at, uh, where we are in our district in terms of um, our work to, uh, on equity and truth and reconciliation. Um, I think the takeaway for me is that that we have uh, some ways to go to go to, to make sure that students are achieving their full potential and and feel uh, as welcomed as they can in our school in our district district spaces um, um so jing through the pa uh, package um i mean these are just some of the examples but, but um uh, uh, there are families that continue to, to face um you know uh, stories of racism and encounters of racism um you have uh, and and this is another example uh when asked how many staff are um in incorporating indigenous content in the work, those those who have been stayed, I think fifty eight eight percent of rated it themselves three or higher on, on a scale from one to, to five. Um, and another example is that um, you know we got uh, when, when asked to uh, indigenous students whether they think that uh, they have visible representation of their own culture, culture and own spaces. Uh, we have fifty three three percent. That's yes, but when you do the math, it's forty. Seven percent that said no. So it's I, I think it's just so sobering for us as decision makers to acknowledge. You know we have ways to go, ways to go front, and um, you know you know just to continue to support the work. And that's why I'm support this amendment uh, this motion being because 
um, these recommendations, they all are in line with what we set out in our strategic plan, which to move forward forward and, like I said, you know, create that more in, uh, well welcoming and inclusive environment. So, um, and I think, you know, just reading the surveys, it's very, very, um, uh, it, it gives me knowledge of what what the students are, are, are yeah. experiencing, and that's why, um, you know, the job is all is to also collect more data, qualitative or or quantitative, and that, that just has everybody everybody of a, a better picture of what what students and all, all stakeholders are facing. So, so, thank you. Well said. Thank you, um, Trustee Belisa. Thank you, Madam Chair. For the purposes of listening public. Uh, I'd like to, to summarize the, why we should consider the, this and what are the, the uh, challenges or barriers that uh, we're going we're gonna to be having in, on this particular uh, recognition. So start by naming the, the full report is part of the public package. So certainly any member of the public can, can read the report um, that and including the recommendation report for, for, for the equity in action project. Um, in terms of moving forward, I, I, the, the recommendations, as you read through the report, and as Trust Trustee has mentioned, the, the centering of voices of our, of our students and families, as well as the experiences of our staff, have really led to some very um, strong rec recommendations to help us move forward, forward as a district. There's, there's been a deal of work ongoing through our dist district for a number of years. This really helps us um, with important information and data to really um, in a really intentional way on specific areas as we continue uh, the, tr the journey towards in tr truth reconciliation and in supporting our learners and supporting Indigenous learners and their fam family. What we want to make sure we do as we move forward and the advisor and also be uh, important in this is checking in. We want to make sure that, that the work that we are doing is having, and this speaks actually to, to the inquiry grant work as well, are we making enough of a difference? And so, I, so I think a really important, important piece is ensuring that, that as forward with our actions, that we are checking in and that we are writing back and we, and we are acting with Indigenous and families as they will tell us how we're doing, doing in, in meeting our goals. Uh, Trustee Wong. So I just can say I appreciate for the staff to spend years to, to make this project, this equity as, uh, as a project. So we can see the package that the page one to check sixteen five. Yes. So it's a whole for people to learn. And as I say that you you just as away from the chair or just the staff. So a lot of the uh, uh, teacher or and uh, staff know know more know the the, the of the uh, history and the culture of the indigenous. So this is bring out that for everyone to learn and the detail for people to. Get the, the dot. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Well, this has just been, um, I guess, a labor of love, but it's also, also you know, it's been been a big project, Jack, and um, we did have a work working group uh, that was was the. Um, he said it, said it, but their work is coming to an end, and um, and so it is time to move ahead. And in this report, is um, is what was needed, uh, and the information in it, in it to move ahead with all those recommendations, and and to move ahead with the uh, the it, the indigenous committee um, that that will be forming. So. Um, I really think yes. I really think I think it, you know it's the recommendations are so important here, um, and I think um, Superintendent Wilson can be a little more succinct with his uh, comments than I, I am at the moment. No, I, I appreciate looking through, through my report and trying to grab things out of, out of it. But no, not at all. Thank you. I guess what I wanted to, to point out is that the Aboriginal Education Enhancement yes. Committee Advisory Committee was struck a number of years ago, uh, based based on what our knowledge was at the, at the time around Indigenous peoples' uh, issues. And since then, we have learned a great deal. Uh, thankfully, we've we've learned a great deal about that, and we know much more about what we need to do much better, better. And what 
what's proposed here, I will, I will set up a structure uh, that will allow, allow as a school district to move forward in collaboration with our stakeholders, with our families, uh, our Indigenous students, um, re really to intensify our efforts and and get get where much closer to where we could be. Because as I agree with you, we have a lot of work to do. Um, I would I would also like to note at the same time that a significant amount of work has has been done in the school district. We have a very effective and Indigenous success team that works so closely uh, with, uh, with our students and families. And I think uh, I read the report carefully, you will see that they've been they've been highly successful in that regard. We need to continue our work. It is a large part of the work of the board board moving. Forward. The next few years so um I, I i would certainly encourage the board to strongly uh, support this thank you so oh, um the aboriginal enhancement committee i think came about because because we had aboriginal enhancement agreement, agreement was just what i was trying to say and um we did renew it uh, a few years ago but that's coming to an, to an end and so now it will be um, moving ahead with more strategic work in the Aboriginal Advisory Committee. So, uh, um, cool for the work that that has done. Yes, by that group. In the and there's years. been lots. So thank you very much. Much. Uh, are there are there any more events, or can we move move ahead then with the recommendation that has been moved and second and seconded. I'll call the question. All those in favor? No, no one is opposed, and the motion is. Carried and, and congratulations and thank, thank you very much. Your work and the work of everyone else that has been involved in this project. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm sticking around just for the next piece. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Trustee Larson, you have a second. One. I have another rec recommendation regards to the Aspen Learning Center Program Review. And the, re the rec recommendation is that the, the Richmond of Education direct staff to proceed with the recommendations contained in the, in the Aspen Learning Center program review. Okay, and uh, I, uh, Trustee Yang, Yang, you're moving the motion in second. I'm seconding, seconding. then moved by, by Trustee Larson. So, uh, Trustee Larson, do you want to? Wanna... Just again, uh, fulsome um, question and comment. Um, um, opportunities at education, but there were a few people missing. So there. Thank you for <laughs> staying for for. Okay. Um, questions. Uh, uh, trust Sergeant. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not on the education committee, so so I am not a rep rep, so I don't. Yeah. Oh, oh, and like, yeah, I can I can. Um, but th this has been a long time. Lots of lots of discussion with with the full board. So I'm you know well in the breast of what what this means, where we're going, and I re really support the recommendations and and thank you for the work and staff's work to get us to move to the to the next. So thank you. I'll pass that on. There's been a great, a large, yes. large number of people working very hard yes, at, the, yes. at this project. I'm including the Aspen staff. So. Yes, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Are any other questions, uh, Maguchi? First of all, I'm really pleased that we are evaluating or you know, looking at the programs because, um, you know, I've worked in this field field for years. Shalot and like this is a very challenging group of kids and 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 students, and it's a challenging program to operate. Right? Uh, and so the fact that we're continuing continue sort of looking at it and just sort of talking away in our back pocket and, and forgetting about it, I think is is is, is X. Uh, one of the concerns that pop, popped up when I read the report is recommendation around, around that it would be nice to have about you know eight or nine students you know eight eight, eight students in a program. Um, you know, one of the challenges I've found over this is. When these kids get this kind of program and it's such an enriched rich environment, such good teaching, um, it's hard for them to leave because they're doing so and so. But you only have a finite amount, an amount of space in the classroom and resource. Uh, uh, was I was there anything in the report that talked about, about how you deal with going numbers? Because because you know, the more success you have, the more people you're going to have knocking on the door, door which is it's a, it's a nice problem in a sense. But um, 
Yeah, absolutely. A part report also so includes really looking at building a, a strong and well-articulated edit entry, as well as exit criteria for the program. And certainly, you know, as watching if, um, um, Aspen over the last number, number of years, the consideration and the work that's done at the school level um, and, ex and really, really work those school teams before we consider other options is a big piece here because there is fantastic work, in our, working in our schools. And then for students for whom... whom uh, despite everyone, everyone, best effort, including that child, that this isn't the right fit right now. Building that criteria for entry also will will help us, um, know that it's the right. This is the right fit, the right environment. That's something that we, that we've working on, as well as I think a, a piece um, because Aspen, although it's been around for about five five years now, hasn't been around for twenty five, and so mm -hmm. we're really learning learning to explore um, to move into different different aspects out of the program. Certainly, with within students with at Aspen, Aspen, there are students who are in the main school at different times. Students who are um, working within then the AX program at different different times. And so, I so I to your point of the the number, there's two pieces to it. And is how do we ensure that we have provided incredibly opportun incredible opportunities in a, in a school environment? And for that very small number of children who for whom Aspen is there is the right fit, that, that we have that process for entry, but also continuing to look at opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece that's also in the report is certainly looking at the Aspen learning space space itself. And although the recommendation is for eight students, as that may evolve over with time, that may also give us more information. Yeah, I just have to say, like, say, working in the field, and um, I've, I've had the fortune of having, having some of my be in the program, and I can't speak enough about it, about the people and the program. And uh, and then, as I said, my only concern is that it's, the walls are only, only can't walls and and uh, so anyway, I'm glad we're we're looking into that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions uh, to trust you on? I just want to like that that if student they said that this this time mm -hmm. they they have a uh, what is for they are week. Yes, they end school full time. Full time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, trust you, please. Uh, I like the, the 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 program, especially that the, it deals with the the needs of these special students. And what I'd like to ask is the long-term sustainability of the program. Uh, do we have do we have enough demand in our school district? Do, do we have enough resources? Knowing that that uh, we need spe special uh, ed educators for this purpose, and uh, in terms of of the budget facilities, uh, and what are the the challenges that you are facing now in terms of barriers? Sure, and I and I actually wanted one comment back back to um, Trustee Wong's comment for when I say students attend full time, they have that have that opportunity. I do want to be clear, clear that for students working with their home teams and working with their families. They may be building towards that, uh, depending on their need. But the opportunity Aspen itself run, runs full days, for days a week. So I just want to clarify that. And then speaking back back to your point, um, one of the things that Aspen was created was to address a need um, for for a very very tiny percent percentage of students in her district who need some more intense intensive supports and structures. And working within the main school environment wasn't wasn't quite the match right now. And so though that had actually Aspen, the creation of Aspen actually was designed to create and meet a need, a need or remove a barrier uh, for children who might be uh, struggling in different ways, despite their very, very best efforts and the incredible efforts of their, their team. Uh, moving forward, Aspen's been, there's, it's been very well supported in our district. And certainly as we, as we, to, if there were any additional requests, we would, would process to, to, to do that. I, I think I also want to speak to the fact that within all of our elementary and secondary schools, there, there are a number of children with a variety of complexities, amazing uh, young people, and the school teams work very, very creatively and with the resources they have to create great experiences. So I just want to high highlight that within the large number of students in our district and the, the, the very small percentage for whom Aspen is the right fit, fit, there is also a great deal of great work happening with other children um, across our district, our district schools. Are there any other questions? I was going to say, you know, I remember um, when we uh, cre created the Arrington Learning Center, 
which is similar for elementary school age students. And um, we had to you know, scramble to put budget together. And there were many people that came together. And, and it's it, it's a beautiful um, place for our young people that really need it. And Aspen was another another great need. Mm -hmm. And and so I, so I think um, we, we always find a way. Um, are there enough resources? <laughs> well, we're always always advocating. That's our job to advocate for, for those resources. But we find a way every time. Time. So um, I'm really thankful for the, this review, and it's very helpful. And yes, I'm de definitely in court. But um, the motion has been moved and seconded. Though I'm going going to call it at this point. All those in favor. And no one's opposed. So, so congratulations and thank you. Thanks so much. And uh, our young people in that program will benefit. Okay. okay. Uh, and um, I just want to know, note there are some minutes from September 14th. Thank you, you, Rusty Larson and facilities. And building uh, uh, Kri Trusty Hamaguchi. Great, okay, thank you. Minutes of the meeting on October 3rd are attached, attached for admission. Meeting was on Wednesday, January 4th. Next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, Wednesday, February 1st at 4 30 p.m. Okay. Thanks. And um, sorry, I pulled up the wrong recommendation. So it's my turn for policy committee. committee. Oh, oh final and legal. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. around. I have two recommendations. Yes, you do, do. <laughs> okay, pay first recommendation in, in whereas the Board of Education of District 38 is for expenses incurred by trustees in the discharge of your duties, be, be resolved in accordance with the School Act. The Board of Education and School District 38 approves trustees' expenses paid during the three month period September. Ending in September 30th, 2022, in the amount of eight hundred and seventy-seven dollars, and I move that. That. Okay, I need a seconder. Trustee, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Pass. And then, and uh, I have another recommendation as we didn't have a December meeting. Uh, whereas the Board of Education, School District 38, Richmond, is paying for for expense incurred. By the trustees in discharge of their duty, be it resolved all that in accordance with the School Act, the Board of Education of SD 38 approves trust expenses paid during the three month period and ended December 31st, 2022, in the amount of $5,432.88. Okay. So moved. Um, one second, defended by Charlie Yang. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Very, very. And our next meeting is February 15th at, at talk. Thank you. Now it's, well, it's my turn. <laughs> Policy committee. Uh, I have two recommendations. Um, the first one, one is a uh, uh, recommendation. Um, is that Policy committee recommends to the Board of Education that the revised special draft of policy 101 and proposed new regulation 101R, uh, currently referred to as goals and an objectives, be referred for stakeholder input process for the, the period of Jan January 26 to March 6, uh, 2023. And I'm looking for a seconder. Trustee Yang, thank you. Um, um, so this, uh, uh, policy 101, um, their initial draft, uh, at, uh, policy committee and, uh, was share, shared with, um, members of, at uh, the public, uh, policy committee, uh, December 12th and, Back was shared and considered for incorporated into the next draft after the policy regulation. And so um, we are feeling that this now 
uh, can move into the uh, stakeholder um, input process and and uh, so we feel like it's ready to go to go this policy the goals and objectives did a major overhaul and I'm I'm not sure you want to speak to that um, superintendent Robinson in any way I just like to say that the the uh, current policy is quite quite outdated. I ref, I ref some much uh, antiquated, I would say, say uh, planning policy on behalf of the board that hasn't really reflected the current uh, practice practice from time. So we've taken it through policy committee committee a number. Of, it's actually been to about three time, times. We've got some uh, really good feedback from stakeholders mm -hmm. that's been incorporated, and I think now it's uh, ready to go yeah. for first. And it, yeah, and it's also you know we now have a different different process. Uh, strategic plan instead of you know some of the old processes so um that policy was was highly outdated and go for the new the new one so oh, um is there, are there any questions regarding this motion okay so i'm going to call a question all those in favor favor and the motion is passed and um i'm also bringing uh, a notice of motion uh, in accordance with its board policy 204, creation vision of policy regulation. Uh, this is a notice of motion that a recommendation be presented to the February 22nd, 2023, public meeting of the Board of Education to approve uh, the rise policy section 700 facilities phase two and uh that policy has been um back and forth for, for quite some time and and so uh i'll be bringing that no no option to the next um board meeting in february so oh. That's it. That's it uh, for me. And the minutes of this of the meeting have October third and December twelfth are attached. For, for information and a, a meeting also held on January twenty third. And the next meeting meeting is scheduled for Monday, February thirteenth at eleven a.m. And there is no correspondence. Uh, Board, board committee representative reports. Um, Council board liaison meeting meeting was held January 11, and uh, there were a few few things discussed. Um, there were some some questions uh, from the councilors, and um, we also just dis discussed meeting with um, with, with uh, between the board and count, which I can share more about later so um i thought that's it i'm looking for a motion to adjourn trust trustee thanks second university lars all those in favor the motion is carried thank you